Hello beautiful people and welcome to Dan the Bugman's do-it-yourself pest control tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to keep your home free from pests like ants, crickets, spiders, mice, silverfish, and stink bugs all in one video. Luckily for you, you have found what I'm considering the best do-it-yourself pest control video on the internet. I myself am actually a pest control professional with years of experience in the industry. Today, I'm going to be revealing to you the biggest secrets that pest control companies do not tell their customers. Customers. If you watch this video all the way through, I can guarantee that you are going to leave here with the knowledge and skills needed to keep your home pest free for years to come. So let's do this thing. So yes, you will actually be able to prevent all the above mentioned pests. This video is going to be broken down into two main steps that you need to follow. Both steps are equally important. So please do not skip one thinking that one is not as important as the other. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the two steps and then we will break it down further into each one with more detail. So step one, is to remove any conditions that are conductive to pest infestations from inside or around the perimeter of your home. Then step two is to apply pesticides around the perimeter of your home to prevent pests from establishing a population. Again, please do not skip step one and go to step two. It's gonna waste a lot of time and money on your part. So now I'm gonna explain how to do step one and then I'm gonna explain how to do step two. I'm going to be walking you through the concept of an integrated pest management strategy. But that word is really just a fancy term for a very simple concept. For you watching this video, all integrated pest management means is that you need to make sure that there are no food, water, or shelter sources for pest species near your home. This includes inside your house, and it also includes the outside perimeter of your house. Those three things are the three things that all beautiful creatures on this earth need to survive. If they don't have those three things inside or near your home, you exponentially, drastically decrease the chances of ever, ever getting a pest infestation in your home. So first, let me quickly show you some examples of conditions that are conductive to pest infestation. These videos are videos I've taken from customers' houses that have actually ended up calling a professional company and myself to come out and treat their pest issues. So some of these clips may be surprising or some of them may hit closer to home. For example, this lady that had mice living inside her house, actually turns out she had a ton of food and shelter sources like you're seeing in this video that were allowing these mice to have great breeding sites. Or this gentleman who was complaining about ants, only for me to realize that he has mounds and mounds of leaves in the exact area of the house just outside where he was seeing the ants. Or this customer who had a very severe gnat problem in their kitchen only to see piles and piles of dishes piled up in the sink that had not been cleaned in weeks. Like this crawl space I'm currently in, the insulation is falling down literally everywhere. And there's a ton of mice droppings and a ton of other spiders and stuff. All of this insulation, that needs to be cleaned up. Or finally, again, this customer with a dirty kitchen had a bunch of German cockroaches. Those are the notorious cockroaches that infest kitchens only to find out that their kitchen looks like this food and nasty stuff just everywhere. So hopefully these videos made sense to you guys. So this section we're about to talk about is the most important part of this whole video. If you can understand the biology of these pests that are trying to invade your home, then you can better understand how to control them in the long run. I cannot tell you the percentage of the times when I go to a customer's house that has a pest problem that they could have completely avoided if they had just done the things that we're about to talk about. Probably 80 or 90% of the time, if they would have just done some more cleaning or known a little bit more about pest management, they could have completely prevented the pest infestation from ever starting. And they wouldn't have even needed to spend their hard earned money to call professionals like myself to help treat their house. But I'm always happy to help. So now that I've shown you a couple clips, I'm going to actually go over with you some of the most common places that you can look in your house. These are the most common places that cause pest infestations. When we look at each of these areas of your house, these are the areas that you need to make sure are completely food free, completely moisture free, and completely shelter free so that these pests do not have an environment to breathe. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and go inside the house. Primarily the kitchen. The kitchen tends to be the most common area that people tend to neglect that create pest issues. Now, in my opinion, the kitchen needs to be absolutely spotless all of the time, but I know that's not practical and I know crumbs happen and stuff happens and stuff gets spilled, but you need to clean it up as fast as fast as possible. My beautiful kitchen, for example, it is not spotless, but it is definitely, for the most part, crumb free and only a couple things, don't look at those, just a couple things laying, but 
There is no food laying out that things like roaches or ants would have easy access to. And most importantly, you need to make sure there's no food building up in areas behind the stove and refrigerator and appliances like that that are not commonly moved. So in my opinion, you should just go ahead and take a flashlight and peek behind there. If there's a bunch of crumbs or other nasty things, you need to clean it up. Because most likely, you're coming to me because you have some kind of pest problem that you want to make sure is resolved. And I'm telling you, it may sound like a chore list as we get going into this video, but you need to keep your kitchen extremely clean. The next two most common issues I come across are also food sources, and that's pet food and that's bird seed. People love to feed birds and people also love to have pets and they feed their pets with food, usually inside their house, and they put the bird seed out right next to their house. The bird seeds are gonna attract all kinds of pests that can feed on the seed, as well as the pet food. Even the little crumbs that the pets don't eat, those need to be wiped up and cleaned at all times. Other things like the bedroom and the garage. I know it's easy to just throw your clothes around or stack up boxes upon boxes upon boxes in the garage or attic, but those are only going to create more and more pest problems. And finally, the bathrooms inside your house. They also need to be as clean as possible without any excess moisture. So by doing all these things inside your home, you're on the right track to achieving complete pest freedom. So the inside of the house is the most important. But the next step, you might need to get some gloves on because we're gonna go outside the house. So outside the house, by far, the most common issue is having piles and piles of random rubbish laying right next to the house. When you're stacking piles of leaves, piles of firewood, piles of just random crap, excess mulch, even right next to the house that is creating environments for these pests that live outside to have a home directly next to your home. And these pests are usually very small. And if they have a living area right next to your house, it is only a matter of time before they just randomly crawl into your house. And another important part to think about outside the house is the trash can. Again, it's another food source for these pests, but the trash needs to be in the trash can, but also it needs to be away from the house. As far away from the house, really, as you can get it. Like If you need to put it in the neighbor's yard, then that's okay with me, as long as it's not next to your house. And finally, things like landscaping, those need to be controlled. Let's take a look at my average landscaping. For the most part, there is no major plants that are leaning up next to the house that is causing a literal interstate for things like ants to get onto the house. For example, guys, check out these beautiful bushes. I don't know what they're called, but see, they don't touch the house. See how there's plenty of space all along here. There's plenty of space between the bushes and the house. So go ahead and grab a pair of clippers or a chainsaw and cut any branches that are hanging onto your house any leaves, any shrubs, anything like that. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second half of this video. Um, I had to cut it and start again the next day, which is tomorrow, which is today. The neighbors decided to start mowing their yard and it was also getting dark. So here we are for the fun part of the video, applying pesticides around the perimeter of your house. Now, I'm gonna be doing one pesticide as the main application, and then I'm gonna show you two bonus pesticides and tools you can use around your house to make sure you are 100% pest free. I have them right here. You can also buy this on the beautiful internet as you can buy everything on the internet these days. I'm gonna show you how to apply this. This is an outside perimeter chemical. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna do the two bonus products and let's get into it. The product that I'm going to recommend for you to apply around the perimeter of your house is a product called Talstar. It's a very good product. It's a general insecticide. You don't have to buy a container this big. This one is three fourths a gallon. You're also going to need a handheld pump sprayer or a larger backpack pump sprayer. They go on your back like three to four gallons. You pump them up on the side. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna link the Amazon links to buy those in the description. Anyways, you need an application device to apply this. Now, this product has a label. If you open this up and scroll through it, it is 68 pages. Officially, you need to read the label. Unofficially, I've read it before, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply this product without having to read it. I think that in itself is worth a like. So depending on what size sprayer you have, this one is a one gallon sprayer. Tau Star is mixed at a one ounce per one gallon ratio, which is easy to remember. So all you need to do, you take the Tau Star first, Measure it out in its measuring container right up there. Only one ounce, believe it or not, and put it 
in this one gallon of water. So you put the towel star in first and then you put the water in and you mix it up. So I'm gonna do that right now. Welcome back. I have my stuff mixed up here. If you have watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I am notorious for never wearing the proper PPE, but I am gonna wear some gloves today just for fun. You should wear gloves. It's not gonna kill you. Of course, I've gotten it on me before and I'm still kicking. So we're gonna do some laps around the house and I'm gonna show you where I'm applying these chemicals. Now, it is important to know exactly where to apply them. You don't just willy-nilly apply them in the bushes or you know here and there. You wanna target some specific areas. So I'm gonna show you exactly where those areas are. As a pest control professional, I know where bugs get in and I know what's going on with most houses. Before we start spraying, you want to pump up whatever device you've, you've gotten. Now this one's a hand pump. When you squeeze the trigger, the product will come out. You want it to come out in as much of a mist as possible. Now, that may not make sense. Why would we want it to mist out? We wanna pour this stuff out, right? We wanna get some chemicals out, but that's not true. You're not drowning these bugs and chemicals. It really just matters what kind of surface area you cover. We wanna cover as much surface area as possible. Turn it on a pretty light mist. The first place is you're gonna just spray right next to where the ground and the side of the house meet. You're gonna give it one of these numbers. Second place, See this bad boy and this bad boy. Those are entrances from the exterior into the crawl space. You wanna spray around those as well. So get up there. As the chemical starts to get used, give it another pump. Spray that, spray around there. The third place, the window. See all these little cracks? That's where bugs can get in. We're gonna spray around those cracks. And the fourth place, see that? That's what we call around here the eave. It's called a soffit. You're spraying that area too, where the wall comes in contact with the eave and all the way out on the eave as much as you can. When you're spraying this, be very careful. The chemicals, if they don't get stuck on the surface, they will fall down. So you want to spray and then walk away. Spray and walk away from it just like that. Those four places, that's gonna get you most of your house treated. So just go ahead, go around, make a lap where you're treating the ground, around there, and around there. So this is also a unique area that adds a couple more features that you need to spray. When you have a porch or something like that, it's okay. Just go ahead and spray the ground. Go ahead and spray where the porch meets the side of the house. Now this part of the house has siding. Siding is a very common area where pests can get in. So feel free to spray a little extra heavy around the siding. And then this door over here, you just spray around the door as you would spray around the window. Finally, when you got a big porch, the roof overhanging, go ahead and spray the cracks all around the roof here. Let me show you how it's done. Spray around here, there. There, there, there. Spray up here, that's where spiders and stuff get in and wasps. All the way up there, back around here, and around the door. All this siding has a ton of cracks where pests can get in. I hope that makes sense. It's pretty simple. On an average size house, say a 2,000 square foot house, you're gonna use about two gallons of mixture. Two gallons of water and two ounces of the towel star. So you don't need to buy a big container of pesticides that will last a while. Now, how long will this chemical last as an active pest killing chemical? That's gonna last about two months before it starts to break down. I'm not going to make you watch me apply the chemical around the whole house. It's pretty straightforward, like I said. A lap around the foundation, a lap around the vents and any other holes into the house, like the AC duct work, a lap where you hit the windows and doors, and a lap where you hit up around the eaves. So by applying, the towel star and removing any conditions that may be conductive to pest infestations. You've almost done it, like you're almost there. The two bonus products that are very useful in my opinion. The first one are glue boards. What you're gonna do and buy yourself a pack of these glue boards. What you do with these when you get them is I always fold them up. They work much better if they are folded up. Fold them up first and you pull that thing off, put it in its thing, now you got a little box of stickiness. Where should you put this box of stickiness? Well, come on inside. I'm gonna show you 
three great places to put these boxes of sticky. For the most part, you wanna put these on the ground floor, or if you have a basement, you can put them in the basement as well. The first place I'm going to recommend is in a downstairs bathroom, right behind this beautiful toilet. You wanna put it with the part that's not folded on the ground. So, see it back there? See how it's touching the wall and flat on the ground? Another good place to put them is behind a living room couch. There's a couch and you can put one right there against the wall and flat on the ground. And the final place you can put them is right beside your bed, tucked between the nightstand and the bed, but under the wires, so it's still flat on the ground. They're very helpful devices to let you see what issues are actually coming in your house. The second bonus product is an ant bait. I'm gonna recommend one. I'm gonna go ahead and pop link in the description below hand. Any professional grade ant bait is a very important tool to have on hand the towel star we applied. Unfortunately, it is not a colony eliminating product, meaning it doesn't transfer to other members of the colony. Ants have a colony system and you have to use a special product to get rid of them. So that is the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. That was Dan the Bugman's do it yourself pest control tutorial. What I did today, it's gonna sound a lot like a chore list and then applying some products. I'm telling you the truth, and if you do, as I told you, I promise it's gonna work. If it doesn't work, then I will drive to your house and do a free pest control service for you. So thank you guys so very, very much for watching, and I will see you guys very, very soon.